Welcome back. So, in the last lecture, we just started the discussion on the 1D consolidation theory proposed by Terzaghi, and there we have uh, we, we discussed about the assumptions based on that this 1D consolidation theory was established. So, those assumptions already we have discussed. Now, basically, we are considering uh, this kind of say soil deposit. So, you have sand at top and you have sand at bottom and in between that you have the clay layer which is getting sandwiched between these two sand layers. You have the ground water table is here. So, that the clay is or the clay deposit is completely saturated which is one of the assumptions right. The depth of the clay layer is 2 times H d r. So, why 2 is coming to the picture we will be coming to that point later on because uh, there is something something else because I will use only H d r. So, 2 H d r will be uh, is coming to the picture to take care of something. So, that that I will come to that point later on. Okay. So, z that is the vertical direction. So, at at this interface z is 0 and z is continuously increasing in the vertical upward direction. Now, we are applying some stress increment delta sigma and you have at any point at any point along this clay deposit you can find out the excess pore water pressure due to the application of this stress increment or the pressure increment as u by gamma w. So, that is nothing but the head of the that u is the excess pore water pressure and h is the head of water due to that. So, that h you can find out by putting the uh, piezometer at any location in the clay deposit. Okay. So, this is the problem. So, this problem we are going to uh, uh, going to uh, say analyze. Now, we are considering any say soil element okay, some three dimensional soil element we are considering in the clay deposit. So, which is having the dimensions uh, d z in the z direction, d y in the y direction and d x in the x direction. So, d x, d y, d z is the total volume d x into d y into d z is the total volume of this soil element. Now, we are considering 1 d flow that means, the flow will be only in the one direction as that is another assumption in the 1 d consolidation theory establishment. right? So, the flow is happening. So, this is the inflow direction. So, inflow is happening on this plane. Okay. So, on this plane. So, v z into d x into d y. So, v z is the velocity of flow or the water. Okay. So, on in the inflow on the when it is entering the soil element and when it is exiting the soil element at that time the velocity is v z plus del v z del z d z. Right. So, that is the incremental velocity. Now, now for the soil element, now for the soil element shown, okay, in this in this figure, okay, rate of outflow. Please try to understand. So this is completely mathematical. So uh, if you understand this thing, then uh, rest of the things will be pretty, uh, I mean, similar or simple, right? So rate of outflow minus rate of inflow. That means whatever amount of water is going out. And whatever amount of water is going in, okay, the difference between these two will be nothing but the rate of volume change. Am I right or not? Because the rate of inflow, whatever is entering and whatever is going out, the total quantity, if the mismatch, that mismatch is happening due to the volume change of the soil deposit. Right? So, thus, uh, what is rate of outflow? The rate of outflow is nothing but v z into del v z del z d z into d x d y right on that area on that cross sectional area d x d y the flow is happening. So, that is the quantity of outflow. What is the rate of inflow? Rate of inflow is nothing but v z into d x into d y that is nothing but your rate of inflow that is the amount of water or the I mean fluid is uh, entering the soil element and that is nothing but rate of volume change del v d t, okay, where v is the volume of soil element and v z is the velocity of flow in z direction. Agreed? So, this is the expression for your fundamental 1 d consolidation theory. I mean first I mean this is the backbone uh, equation or the expression for your 1 d consolidation theory. Now, from that equation 
we can get del v z del z d x d y d z is equal to del v d t, where v is the volume of the soil. So, using Darcy's law, I can write v z equal to k into y, so k is the coefficient of permeability and i is the hydraulic gradient. Now, that can be written as minus k into del h del z, because minus sign is coming, because your uh, I mean you are getting basically the height or the pore fluid okay. the, that is uh, this del h del z is nothing but your uh, hydraulic gradient right. So, minus sign is coming because of your pore I mean pore pressure right or pore fluid pressure is I mean coming down or it is decreasing with increase in the velocity. So, now that minus k into del h del z is equal to in, in place of h you can write down k, uh, u by gamma w right already we have seen u by gamma w we can write in place of h, h is the head of pore water pressure. So, in place of h we can write down u by gamma w. So, if I put h is equal to u by gamma w, so I can write minus k gamma w del u del z right. So, that is inversely proportional, so that is why this negative sign is coming to the picture. Now, from equation 4.22 and 4.23, so from these two equations basically I can write in place of del v z del z, I can write k by gamma w del 2 u del 2 z is equal to 1 by d x d y d z into del v d t right, very simple. Now, during consolidation rate of change in volume of soil is equal to rate of change in volume of voids already several times we have discussed this thing. So, volume of soil uh, of whatever, whatever change is happening in the volume of soil that is nothing but equal to the volume of I mean change in volume of voids right. So, if that is true, so del v d t that is the rate of change in volume of soil is equal to del v v by d t del t. So, which is nothing but rate of change in volume of voids, which can be written as in place of v v, I can write v s plus e into v s agreed, where v s is the volume of solid and e is the void ratio and we can write down so v s plus e v s is nothing but v v. So, I can write this. So, from this if we expand this term, so I can write del v s del t plus v s into del e del t plus E into del V s del T. Now, as soil solids is incompressible, so already this is one of the assumptions, we are considering the soil solids are incompressible. As the soil solids is incompressible, then basically del V s del T must be equal to 0, there will be no change in volume of solid with time. So, del V s del T must be equal to 0, if that is 0, so this term will be 0 and this term will be 0. So, this term will be left out. So, V s again we can write we can see or we can uh, we can establish this thing from our previous background or previous knowledge that V s is equal to V y 1 plus E naught. So, basically we can establish this relation V s is equal to V y 1 plus E naught from our previous uh, knowledge whatever we have covered. So, which can be written as d x v, what is v? v is the volume of soil element that is nothing but d x d y and into d z. So, that divided by 1 plus e naught. So, del v d t is equal to, so basically in place of v s, so basically del v d t is equal to del v del t is equal to v s del e del t right. So, that is in place of sir the del v del, del v del t is equal to v s into del e del t right. Now, combining equation 4.24 and 4.26 okay, we will be getting minus k by gamma w del to u del, del to z is equal to 1 plus uh, 1 by 1 plus e naught into del e del t right. If you if you combine these two equations, you will be getting this expression. 
Now, the change in void ratio is caused by increase of effective stress that is a decrease of excess pore water pressure that also we know from our earlier discussion. Right. The change in void ratio is caused by I mean wh which will cause this change in void ratio that will be basically your increase in effective stress. If you have the increment in the effective stress then only the volume will be changing right otherwise there will be no change in volume already we have seen. The volume change is completely associated with the increase or enhancement in the effective stress. So, and which will further tell you that there will be some excess pore water pressure will be going down right. So, decrease is decrease of excess pore water pressure. So, the change in void ratio is caused by increase of effective stress that is a decrease of excess pore water pressure agreed. So, assuming they are linearly related that means this change that means change in void ratio okay, uh, caused by some increase in effective stress and decrease in pore water excess pore water pressure. So, these things are linearly related. Okay. So, the, the, the relation between these things are linear if that is true then daily that is the change in void ratio is equal to some say I mean some constant a v into. So, is if effective stress increases I mean change in void ratio uh, will be happening. So, a v some some constant into multiplied by del uh, del uh, del into uh, delta sigma prime right. So, that is nothing, but this gives me the increase in or the change in effective stress. So, if it increases that also will be happening. So, this is some constant we will come to that point of what is this constant what is known as. Therefore, you have some that is equal to minus a v into del u why minus because with change I mean enhancement in the or increase in the effective stress you will be getting decrease in the excess pore water pressure. So, that will be I mean inversely I mean not inversely that will be in the negative uh, relation right. So, minus a v into del u. Now, where delta sigma prime is nothing but change in effective pressure and a v is coefficient of compressibility and a constant. So, a v is known as coefficient of compressibility. So, please remember this term like C C C S all those things you remember similarly a v you need to remember what is that is known as coefficient of compressibility that is nothing but the change in void ratio divided by change in effective stress. So, that ratio because you have the linear relation. So, that ratio is nothing but the coefficient of compressibility. The combining equations 4.27 and 4.28 now we can get. So, this was there earlier. Now, we can write that is minus a v into 1 plus e naught into del u del t. So, if you if you go back. So, del e del t in place of that we can write down this del u del t in place of del e del t we can write down del u del t minus a v into del u del t right. That is nothing but equal to minus m v into del u del t where m v is the coefficient of volume compressibility and is equal to a v by 1 plus e naught. Okay. So, a v by 1 plus e naught that is nothing but your m v and that is known as coefficient of volume compressibility. Okay. So, therefore, we are getting one expression like this del u del t is equal to C v into del to u del to z okay, which is nothing but equation 4.30. So, we are getting some partial differential equation which is nothing but the 1 deconsolidation equation. Okay. So, del u del t is equal to C v into del to u del to z where C v is the coefficient of consolidation and is given by k by gamma w into m v. Okay. So, please and now try, try to understand how we have got this 1 D consideration equation. Right. So, now if you try to solve this equation what are the things you need? You need boundary conditions as well as initial condition. Right. So, let us see what are the different boundary conditions and initial condition you have. So, equation 4.30 is the basic differential equation of Terzaghi 1 D consolidation theory and can be solved with the following boundary and initial conditions. So, what, is, what are the different boundary initial conditions? at z equal to 0. So, this is the first boundary condition at z equal to 0 that means you are here okay. 
what is your excess pore water pressure? That must be 0, because that is the interface between the clay and sand layer. So, the water will be draining out through the sand layer, right. So, the at that location uh, you will be having the u equal to 0, that is the excess pore water pressure must be equal to 0. Then where will be the other location where excess pore water pressure must be 0? That will be at 2 into h d r. So, z equal to 2 h d r your excess pore water pressure must be 0 and at t equal to 0 your excess pore water pressure was u naught u equal to u naught right. That means, you are just applying the increment of effective I mean to total stress that is delta sigma and immediately you will be observing that excess pore water pressure will be building up right and that is nothing but u equal to u naught. Okay. So, these are two I mean uh, different boundary conditions and initial condition. Now, if you apply those things and if you go back to your mathematics and if you solve this differential equation, you will be getting the solution like this. So, u equal to summation m equal to 0 to infinity plus 2 u naught by m capital M into sin m z by 2 h d r into e to the power minus m square T v, where m small m is an integer capital M is 0 0.5 into pi into 2 m plus 1, u naught is the initial excess pore water pressure as I told you and T v is a time factor that is a non dimensional term and this time factor is equal to C v into T. What is C v? Coefficient of consolidation already you have seen C v into T, T is the time divided by H d r square. Okay. So, H d r square means half of the uh, soil deposit depth. So, that is why we have taken we had taken twice H d r that is why we will be we are getting this the very simple expression like the twice H d r was the total depth of the clay deposit. Now, we are getting H d r at the bottom. So, that means the I mean basically if you if you know T v that means for different values of T you can establish T v by knowing H d r right. So, if you know T v, if you know u naught, if you know all those things, you can find out the u that is the what is u? u is the excess pore water pressure at different time, right. So, at at as time increases, you can you can find out how your excess pore water pressure is going to build up. So, that is your main objective, right, in the and or how your excess pore water pressure is getting dissipated, right. So, as you know at t equal to 0 your excess pore water pressure must be equal to u u naught at t equal to infinity your excess pore water pressure must be equal to 0 right. So, in between that from t equal to 0 to t equal to infinity how the pore water pressure is getting distributed. So, that you will be getting from this expression and once you know the excess pore water pressure dissipation or the excess pore water pressure I mean how that is getting uh, distributed based on that you can find out the effective stress distribution because if you know the total stress you can find out the effective stress by knowing the excess pore water pressure. So, so I will stop here today. So, in the next lecture we will be talking or we will be seeing or we will be observing the excess pore water pressure distribution and then uh, other things we will discuss about uh, consolidation theory uh, in soil mechanics. Thank you very much.